Hello and welcome. I'm Professor Richard Holizak, and this is So You Have a Data Camp Assignment. This presentation is for any student who has been given or will be given an assignment on Data Camp. Some common assignments include complete the Introduction to SQL course, or complete the Introduction to Python course, or complete the Introduction to R course, and so on. What is Data Camp? DataCamp is an online learning platform that provides technology courses, projects, tutorials, case studies, competitions, and many other features that help you to learn about data analytics, data science, machine learning, and AI. There are courses on Python programming, R programming, SQL, Scala, Git, Spreadsheets, Tableau, Power BI, and many others. Sequence of courses are called tracks, Pricing is typically $25 per month, but often there are discounts. For example, as I'm recording this, there's currently a 50% discount. Now, your professor can set up a data camp classroom. It's also called a group, and they can invite students to join. The data camp classroom lasts for one semester, and invitations will be sent to a student's campus email account. Once students join using their campus email, all assignments can be completed for free. If a student is ever prompted for payment, contact DataCamp support and provide the name of the DataCamp classroom or group as well as your username. It's very important that you do not share your DataCamp account. DataCamp monitors all of the logins and the activity, and if they see that an account is being shared, they can actually terminate the entire DataCamp classroom. Step one is to accept the invitation. So check your campus email for your invitation. Be sure to check your spam and bulk mail folder if you don't see the email. If you do not see your invitation after 24 hours, contact your professor and ask for the invitation to be resent. Once you receive the invitation, click the Join the Group Now button and follow the instructions. It's very important to join the group as soon as possible so you do not miss assignments. If your professor sets up the assignment before you have joined the classroom, you won't see the assignment. Next step is to set up DataCamp. Once you've accepted your invitation, log into DataCamp and set up under Account Settings. Click the icon in the upper right corner and choose Account Settings. Make sure your name and email are correct. You can also link your DataCamp profile to your LinkedIn profile as well as other social media. Optionally, you can also fill in the sections under My Portfolio where you can tell people a little bit more about yourself. Step three is to check your assignments. Navigate to the Learning tab at the top of the screen and then click on Assignments on the left-hand side. You should see all of your assignments listed. Click on an assignment to start or continue working on it. Note that your professor may set up the assignments so that you complete them in a specific order. In the example below, we wanted the students to first finish cleaning data with PySpark, then feature engineering with PySpark, and finally machine learning with PySpark. Step four, work on your assignment. Most data camp assignments will require you to complete one course. Be sure to read any instructions from your professor before you start working. For example, keeping track of your experience points and when you start working. Review the course information, including the approximate time needed to complete it, the course content, the number of videos and exercises, any prerequisites you should be aware of, as well as any data sets that are used in the course. Click on the Start Chapter to start working, or you can click on the Continue Chapter to continue working on a chapter. This is a great feature of DataCamp that you can work a little while, and then you can always come back and continue working exactly where you left off. Here's an example data camp course. It's the Introduction to Python course. In this example, it's estimating that it would take you about four hours to complete. There are 11 videos and 57 exercises, and you can earn a total of 4,700 experience points. Notice that each time you watch a video or complete an exercise, you earn experience points. In this case, I've already started work, and I can click the Continue button, uh, sorry, Continue Chapter button in order to continue working. Here's another example. This is an intermediate SQL course. And again, I've completed most of this chapter, but I could continue on working on additional chapters. This is another four-hour course with 14 videos and 50 exercises. 
And finally, here's another one. It's a very gentle introduction to R. Again, another four-hour course. There are no videos, but there are 62 exercises, and you can earn a total of 6,200 XP. Again, clicking the Start Chapter button would allow you to start working on these exercises. Step 5. What happens when you complete a Data Camp course? Once you've completed your course, you will receive a Statement of Accomplishment, which I've abbreviated as SOA. You'll receive this in your email. You may also access your Statement of Accomplishment from within Data Camp. Check your professor's assignment instructions to see if you need to include your SOA when returning in your homework. You may share your SOA on your LinkedIn page or other social media, and I'll put a link for instructions below on how to do that. The Statement of Accomplishment looks something like the following. It'll say Statement of Accomplishment on the top. It'll have your name there, and please make sure you do fill in your name, and then it'll tell the name of the course and when you completed it. Experience points are earned by watching videos, answering questions, and completing exercises. Most exercises require you to write some code, such as in Python, R, or SQL. Writing the correct code earns you the total amount of XP. Taking a hint for the answer reduces the XP, and asking for the solution earns you zero XP. Verify with your professor if your grade depends on whether or not you take hints. In the example above, this exercise that is worth 50 XP, if we take a hint, that'll reduce that by 15. Here's another example from a Python course. This exercise is worth 100 XP. If we take a hint, we're actually going to lose 30 XP. In this editor, we can type in our Python code. We can click the Run Code button, and that will actually run this code interactively. We can see the result. And then once we're happy with the result, we can click Submit Answer. If our answer is correct, we'll get the full credit, 100 XP. If our answer is wrong, we'll get a chance to make corrections and submit it again. If we get it correct, we'll get the full XP. If you really get stuck and take a hint, it will reduce the XP, and then you can submit the modified answer. Here's another example. This is uh, from the Joining Data in SQL course. This is also worth 100 XP, and this is showing you an example of what happens after you have run the code. You can actually see the results here. Okay, pro tip number one. Make sure that you understand what the objective is of the assignment. Professors can assign data camp courses with one or more objectives. The objective could simply be complete the course and show your statement of accomplishment. It could also be to earn as much XP as possible. And also, your professor might restrict whether or not you're allowed to take hints. It's very important that you're clear on what the objective is for your assignment. Be sure you follow all of the assignment instructions, especially if your professor has asked you to record your starting and ending XP and whether or not you need to document your progress. Learn how to take a screenshot or a picture to document your work. On a Windows computer, you can type Alt Print Screen. On a Mac, you can hold down Shift, Command, and 4. Then you can take a snapshot of your screen and you can paste that into your Microsoft Word document or whatever word processor you're using to document your progress. Pro tip number two, look at the data sets used in courses. Most data camp courses require working with one or more data sets. Most data camp courses will show those actual data sets on the right hand side of the main course page. You can download those data sets and open them up in Excel or in a text editor. This makes it easy to reference the names of the columns and variables, and you can see some of the data if you want to explore it a little bit before you work on the exercises. Pro tip number three, keep a copy of your code. After you've tested your code, but before you submit the answer, make a copy. Just highlight the code with your mouse, right click and choose copy, and then you can paste this into a simple text editor like Notepad or TextEdit or Notepad++. Quite often, the next exercise in DataCamp will require you to begin with the code from a prior exercise. You can then just copy your code back from the prior exercise and easily make changes. Pro tip number four, time management. Assignments are typically due in one to two weeks. Don't wait until two hours before an assignment is due to start working. You're just going to get very frustrated trying to rush through everything, and you really will not learn anything. Try working on the chapters for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. A four-hour course can be completed with eight 30-minute sessions. 
This way you're going to retain the lessons and you're not going to get burned out. Be sure to read Datacamp's email reminders carefully, as they will use the Greenwich Mean Time time zone. For example, this course, Understanding Data Engineering, looks like it's due February 3rd, but notice that's at 4.55 GMT. This is actually due February 2nd at 11.55 PM in New York time. Pro tip number five, saving your statement of accomplishment. As I mentioned at the end of each course, Datacamp will issue a statement of accomplishment. Typically, they'll also include a link to download a PDF of this. Be careful as each statement will have the same file name called certificate.pdf. I always rename my certificates with the name of the course, that way I can keep them separated. You can also share your statement of accomplishment on LinkedIn, and again, I'll put instructions at the bottom in the uh, description. Note that the statement of accomplishment is not the same thing as a Datacamp certificate, and that's something I'll talk about in a little bit. Pro tip number six, download the presentations. Most videos have a show slides button that will allow you to view and download the presentation slides. In this example, I was watching a video called Querying a Database, and here's the show slides button in the upper right hand corner. After you click on that, a new window will open with the PDF file displayed. You can then click the download button and it will download onto your computer. Rename the PDF presentation files after you download them. For example, this file downloaded as chapter1.pdf, and I renamed that to intermediate sequel chapter one PDF to keep it distinct from the other courses that I'll be working in. You can use the presentation files as a reference when completing your exercise. Often in the presentations, they'll mention functions or different features of the programming language, and it's just great to be able to have this open in a separate window and you can refer back to it while you're carrying out your exercises. Next, you can also explore Datacamp tracks. So maybe your professor will give you an assignment to complete two or three courses. But you can also explore tracks, and on your own time, you can do additional courses that might end up completing an entire track. For example, under skill tracks, there are skill tracks for Python, SQL, R, AI and machine learning skill tracks, and many others. Datacamp also has career tracks. Career tracks are a mix of different courses aligned with a career goal. For example, the data scientist career track has courses in Python, SQL, R, and AI and machine learning. So it's a mix of different courses. Again, you can always explore those career tracks and maybe see if with a few extra courses completed, you can actually complete one of those tracks. Finally, we can explore many other Datacamp features. Datacamp includes things like projects that you can work on independently, case studies that are like projects where you can read about a certain situation and try to come up with the appropriate code to answer a question. They have code alongs where you can code along with other users. There are competitions where there's a problem that's put out and you can write code to try to see if um, you can solve the problem and compete with others. There's also the Datacamp workspace, which is like a free environment where you can just code at your own pace. And they also even have a jobs board. So I encourage you to explore all of these other features of Datacamp. Finally, I wanted to make a mention of Datacamp certifications. This is a completely separate part of the Datacamp website. Datacamp certifications are recognized in industry. And there's typically a four-step process that you can follow. First, you might want to choose a certification and a level. For example, you might want to choose associate level data scientist. You should then read all of the requirements, understand the process and the steps that you're going to have to go through. Then you can prepare yourself with the learning path, the tracks, and the projects. These certifications require significant amount of coursework, as well as completing several independent projects. Finally, when you've finished all of that, you can register and get certified after passing an exam. Typically for a certification, there are two timed exams and one open-ended practical exam. These must be completed within 30 days of your registration. So Datacamp certifications are very powerful. They're recognized in industry, but they are a significant amount of work. It's super important that you read 
the process and understand the requirements carefully before registering. They also have a readiness quiz that you can try to see where your skills match up. And they also allow you to review the example projects. After the semester is over, the Data Camp classroom will be closed up. While you will no longer be part of the classroom or group, all of your completed courses, tracks, and certifications will remain connected to your Data Camp account. If you're going to be graduating, you may wish to change your account settings and use a personal email address, especially if your campus email address is going to be deactivated. In summary, Data Camp is a comprehensive learning environment with many different opportunities to learn about data and programming. Make sure you understand your homework assignments before you start working. Document your progress and keep track of your statement of accomplishment for each course. And when you have time, you can explore many other features of Data Camp. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.